हाई एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल अरविंद गोयल जी क्लासेस और अरविंद एजुकेशन थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग माई वीडियोज फॉर मोर अपडेट्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल अरविंद गोयल जी क्लासेस और अरविंद एजुकेशन थर्ड स्टेप दट इज इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम एंड ऑक्सीडेटिव ऑक्सीडेटिव फॉस्पोरिलेशन ओके हियर the bigger energy rich substances like nadh2 and fadh2 they are supposed to be converted into simpler energy rich substance that is called atp so let us see conversion of nadh2 and fadh2 into atps so here let me start with nadh2 into nad then fmn into fmnh2 then coenzyme q into coenzyme q h2 then here h plus I mean this h2 is released outside but still the electrons are being transported like this fe3 plus into fe2 plus these are carried by several electron carriers okay so here the electron carrier which is involved here is cytochrome b cytochrome c cytochrome a cytochrome a3 finally the oxygen is involved now this 2 h plus is accepted by oxygen and leads to the formation of water now in between this here sufficient amount of energy is released to the formation of atp and here again leads to the formation of atp here one more and leads to the formation of atp let us see this what happens here as i told you earlier nadh2 is a bigger energy rich substance comparing with a, comparing with atp so it need to be converted into atp so that atp is hydrolyzed and that energy is utilized for various biological activities so nadh2 is converted to form as nad means h2 is removed okay that means nadh2 is oxidized to form as nad now this h2 is accepted by flavin mononucleotide another flavo protein that fmn fmn is reduced because that h2 is taken by fmn so it is reduced to form as fmn h2 okay now this fmn h2 is again oxidized h2 is removed so when h2 is removed the remaining compound is fmn now this h2 is taken by coenzyme q this is taken by coenzyme q so coenzyme q is reduced coenzyme q h2 okay now this two uh, h2 two hydrogen ions uh, means the electrons which are involved there are carried by several electron carriers which are arranged in a chain like structure right in a order that is cytochrome b cytochrome c cytochrome a cytochrome a3 and every time we are seeing the conversion of ferric ions into ferrous ions and ferrous ions into ferric ions you see fe3 plus is converted to fe2 plus means one one uh, electron is lost here so this is loss of electrons is oxidized now fe2 plus is converted into fe3 plus one electron is added so it is reduced so every time several oxidation reduction steps are going on so during these oxidation reduction steps in each step some amount of energy is released if the amount of energy which is released in each step is sufficient to form a inorganic phosphate then it leads to the formation of atp if 
the energy which is released there is not sufficient to form inorganic phosphate then it will be added to the next step then there is also if it is not sufficient then that will be grouped in the next step the amount of energy which is released in released here here and here together leads to the formation of inorganic phosphate which is added to or taken by adp and leads to the formation of atp okay even here also if this is not sufficient the energy which is present here and here both are combined together and leads to the formation of atp that means when 1 nadh2 when 1 nadh2 is undergoing several oxidation reduction steps the hydrogen ions and the electrons which are present there when they are carried to the oxygen they are carried by several electron carriers they are carriers these electron carriers when they are carrying the reactions which are involved there the oxidation reduction reactions which are involved there leads to the production of formation of a inorganic phosphate which was accepted by another electron acceptor so called adp and leads to the formation of atp finally the two hydrogen ions 2h plus which are which are which i have shown here are taken by oxygen which leads to the formation of water okay that means oxygen is involved in the last step here that's why this particular process is called terminal oxidation okay it is called terminal oxidation now in the presence of oxygen inorganic phosphate is added to adp that's why it is called oxidative phosphorylation see in photosynthesis we have seen atp is formed in the presence of sunlight so adp plus pi in the presence of sunlight it leads to the formation of atp that is in the presence of sunlight that's why that is called a photophosphorylation in respiration in cellular respiration adp by combining with inorganic phosphate leads to the formation of atp in the presence of oxygen that's why it is called oxidative phosphorylation okay now what you observed by the end of this when 1 nadh2 is finally converted into atps by the end of this okay 1 nadh2 1 nadh2 when it is oxidized it leads to the production of 3 atps okay 1 nadh2 leads to the production of 3 atps that means comparing with atp nadh2 is a bigger energy rich substance then fadh2 is involved from here fadh2 leads to the formation of fad and fad is involved from here here onwards okay here onwards means this particular step is not there so this is not there means this atp we are not supposed to consider this one i am supposed to write here okay that means fadh2 is undergoing further oxidation reduction steps like this from here onwards from here onwards when a, when fadh2 is oxidized how many atps you are going to see two atps that means when 1 fadh2 is oxidized it leads to the production of two atps okay along with this we got one gtp one gtp simply will produce one atp due to trans phosphorylation okay because of trans phosphorylation gtp is simply converted into atp now you have to remember this okay so let us let us go for final energy production okay let us see the energy production so far we discussed about glycolysis okay the end products of glycolysis are two pyruvic acids two nadh2 four atp and i told you to initiate the process two atps are consumed let us minus them at the end okay let us deduct them at the end of this particular calculation okay then after glycolysis we went into krebs cycle and in krebs cycle pyruvic acid is completely converted into six carbon dioxides along with this 
8 NADH2 are produced, 2 FADH2 are produced and uh, uh, 2 GTPs are produced. Okay. Now, uh, now after this we saw the conversion of complex energy rich substance into simpler. So, basing on that we got 1 NADH is converted into 3 ATPs, 1 FADH2 is going to convert into 2 ATPs, 1 GTP into 1 ATP. So, basing on that let us calculate pyruvic acid is utilized in Krebs cycle, carbon dioxide is produced. So, we are not going to see that. Then in glycolysis, 2 NADH2 are there, Krebs cycle 8 NADH2 are there, so total 10 NADH2 into 1 NADH2 means how many ATPs? 3 ATPs, so is equal to 30 ATP, okay? So this is done, this is done. Next 2 FADH2 are there, 2 FADH2 into 1 FADH2 is equal to 2 ATPs, so 4 ATPs, okay, so this is done, 2 GTPs are there, so each GTP is converted into 1 ATP based on transphosphorylation, so 1 ATP only, so we will get uh, 2 ATPs more and uh, we got directly 4 ATPs, so let us take those 4 ATPs as it is, okay, now what is the total, the total is 40 ATP right 40 ATP <coughs> but to begin the process of uh, glycolysis in first and third step two ATPs are consumed so you just deduct those two ATPs from here the remaining is 38 ATPs so in equation and even in differences I told you we are going to see 38 ATPs 38 ATPs are produced like this okay and in some CBSC books they used to mention even the production is 36 ATPs. So where two more ATPs are consumed means in glycolysis along with two pyruvic acids, two NADH2 are produced. These two NADH2 are produced where? In the cytoplasm. So now from, from cytoplasm they are supposed to shift into Krebs cycle. Where Krebs cycle occurs? In mitochondrial matrix. So when these two NADH2 are shifting from cytoplasm into mitochondrial matrix, these are the bigger energy rich substances, they can't simply move. So that's why for their movement, right, two ATPs are consumed. So two NADH2 are shifted from cytoplasm into mitochondrial matrix by utilizing two more ATPs. That's why in some books they used to show by, my, by reducing those to 36 ATPs remember this okay now once you understand this okay every time we are saying yes 38 ATPs are produced that is okay but one point I have mentioned very clearly when when one glucose molecule is oxidized completely we are going to see 686 kilocalories amount of energy is released then we got 38 ATPs here whenever ATP is hydrolyzed when ATP is broken in the presence of water, it leads to the production of energy that is from one ATP when it is hydrolyzed, we are going to see the production of 7200 calories of energy. That means 7.2 kilocalories of energy. When one ATP is hydrolyzed, we are going to see the production of 7.2 kilocalories of energy, 7.2 into 38. Okay, so 7.2 into 38 <coughs> ATP, it leads to the formation of 273.6 kilocalories, that's it. Okay, that means ATP, chemical energy, how much we, we, uh, we got? 273.6 kilocalories in the form of ATP. Okay, we just, we just deduct this, we'll get 4 so 5, uh, 2, 1, 4, okay. So what about this remaining amount of energy? When one glucose molecule is oxidized, we are obtaining 686 kilocalories of energy. Out of that 38 ATPs we are utilizing. 38 ATPs means when each ATP is hydrolyzed, we are going to get 7.2 kilocalories. 7.2 into 38 ATPs, we are going to see 273.6 kilocalories approximately around 40% of glucose. The amount of energy 
which is converted in the form of ATP is is around 40%. What about the remaining 60% of energy? When you minus this 273.6 kilocalories from this, you will get 412.4 kilocalories. This 412.4 kilocalories is converted to form as body temperature. It is converted to form as body heat. Why? Because we are homeothermal in nature. We are warm-blooded organisms. So whenever metabolic activities are going on, whenever glucose is oxidized, it should produce sufficient amount of heat. Means body temperature need to be maintained. That is done whenever each glucose molecule is oxidized. Okay, right? So this is the end of mechanism which is involved in aerobic respiration. Okay, then let us see in third part the mechanism which is involved in anaerobic respiration, then what is fermentation, then how plants will respire, we will discuss in part 3. For more updates, please subscribe my channel Aravind Educations or Aravind Biology Classes. Thank you.